Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we are going to talk about the power set. The power set. So the way the power set works is basically it generates a subset. Um, so it takes all of the subsets of the particular set and clubs them into one giant set. So what do I mean when I say that? Let's take an example. So let's say you have a set A. Um, so let's say set A contains elements. A power set of set A would basically look something like this. So you would have a uh, you have an empty set first of all then um, you know because the empty set is also a possible set then you have a uh, then you have B then you have C um, then you have a combination of the elements you have a comma B you have a B comma C you have a a comma C and then you also have all of the elements a B and C together so this is basically the power set of the set A. So you can basically generate a power set by hand for any number of you know, elements in a set. Now, what we want to do is we need to find an algorithm or create an algorithm which actually generates this entire power set. Now, before we get into the algorithm itself, I also want to you know, talk about some um, you know, meta information. So it's like the amount, if you count how many elements um, in the power set there are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There are eight elements. If you see, there are three elements in the set A, and in the power set, there are eight elements. So you could, you know, deduce something like two raised to n is your number of elements in the pow power set, right? So two raised to n here in this case, n is equal to three. So that is two raised to three, which is basically eight, because two into two into two is eight. Math, you know. That's just how math works. Uh, there's something more that I want to tell you that might just blow your mind. Um, let's take eight, right? Let's just, so there are eight possibilities, right? So let's just write them down. We're going to start from zero though, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that is one, two, three, four, five. yeah, that's eight. There are eight basic numbers here, which start from zero. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert them into binary. I'm going to convert them into binary. So the binary value of 0 is 0, 0, 0. The binary value of 1 is 0, 0, 1. The binary value of 2 is 0, 1, 0. And then similar to 0, 1, 1, um, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So if you start from 0, this is basically the binary value that you're going to get. Now, now, now look at this and look at this and try to imagine A, B and C in this position. So if you watch closely A, B and C where 0, 0, 0 exists, there is an empty set. Where 0, 0, 1 exists for C, there is C. Where 0, 1, 0 exists, there's a B. Where 0, 1, 1 exists, there is, you know, B and C together, which is this one, this one. So we covered this one. One zero zero. There is A. One zero one, which is A and C. There is A and C. One one zero. There is A and B. And uh, one one one, A B and C. So, literally, just taking the length, converting each element into binary, and just matching those elements with the set values, literally gives us the entire power set. Now this, if this does not blow your mind, I don't know what will, okay? This is literally some crazy woo voodoo shit. I don't, I don't know. It's insane. Look at it. Literally just, you know, like mapping binary numbers uh, to the amount of, uh, you know, what, whatever power set uh, length is going to be, you, you basically get your values. You basically get the entire power set. Now, what is the challenge of the algorithm? Now, the challenge of the algorithm is basically, is basically to, you know, get this value from code, get all of this from code. So match this al. So we're basically writing a program which will use this logic to generate the power set. Okay. Now let's let's take a look at the code. It's going to be very interesting. Okay. So this is the code. So here, um, basically, if you go to the bottom over here. This part over here is basically I'm calling the power set function. So it, this is a power set function call. And inside the function call, I'm passing in uh, three values. That is one, two, and three. All of them are basic strings. 
Um, so these are my set values. So in the example, we took ABC, but in the code, I'm just writing one, two, three. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. You can just change it if you want to. The code is in the description as always. So I'm calling this function. This function returns something to print out and, and it's just printing that out. Cool. Cool. Now, uh, let's take a look at the function call. So this is the function def power set. And in this, we are passing the set, right? So this is our set in the function. I'm calling this the original set for X, Y, Z reasons. I have no idea why I call it the original set. So it's called the original set over here. And uh, what I'm doing here is that I'm saying subset is empty. So the subsets being empty is, is a possibility, right? Subsets are empty, which means that at the end, if you see at the bottom, I'm returning subsets. So subsets are the, the sets that are going to be formed once you go through the algorithm, right? Subsets are the values or the sets that are going to be formed. Now, I'm also, uh, you know, writing uh, this thing over here where number of combinations equal to two double multiplication into length of original set. So what does double multiplication mean in this case? It means raised to. So this basically means two raised to length of original set. So this is, this is basically two raised to three, which is giving me eight in this case, because the length of the set that we are passing in is three. So this will give me a value of eight. Now, uh, so this gave me a value of eight, and this is an empty, you know, empty list, empty array for combination uh, index in the range of zero to number of combinations. So combination index in this case, so I'll just say CI, this goes from a zero to the number of combinations, which is eight. So this is the outer loop. This is the outer loop and it runs uh, eight times. And in those eight times, the combination index, the value goes from zero to eight. So it's the, this, this is like a for loop where, you know, this could be I, but I just, you know, it's just called combination index. So in that case, you have the subset. So I'm defining a subset here and the subset is going to basically contain the subset and the subset will be appended into the subsets. So the subsets will contain a bunch of subset. You get what I'm saying? So multiple subset, a lot of subset will be put into subsets and that's how you get the power set, right? Cool. So when you're doing the for loop and you're defining the subset, look at this, uh, you know, look at this statement over here for set element index in range of zero comma length of original set. Now, number of combinations are going to be from zero to eight, right? The length of original subset is going to be from zero. So the CI is going to go from here to here and EI, that is the element index is going to go from, um, what's it called? Zero to length of original set. So original set is zero to three, zero to three in every single case, because that's the length of the set. Cool. Okay. O obviously we are not including eight. It's always going to be seven and it's always going to be two. Obviously in Python, you don't include, you don't include eight. So now in the example, we saw that we were converting, um, you know, the combination index, which is the range, so the, the number of elements into binary numbers. Now, yeah, you can even execute this by converting it into binary, but there is a better way to do it. And the better way is over here. This is the better way to do it. Now, what are we doing over here? Uh, if combination index and one, uh, and then you have this less than less than sign and then set element index. Now, this is a bitwise bitwise operation. Now, what is a bitwise operation? A bitwise operation doesn't deal with the actual values, the actual decimal values of the numbers that you pass in. They deal with the binary values of the numbers that you pass in. So let's say, take an example in the first loop, in the first loop, you're going to have combination index, that is combination index, which is going to be equal to zero. And you're going to have set element index, that is element index, also equal to zero. What happens in that case? So uh, this fun this equation basically becomes uh, zero and one zero. So obviously, you can imagine this something like this, 
where one and this is the right bitwise so bitwise oh sorry the left bitwise shift shift left is what this operator is called shift left what this operator basically does is let's say you do something so i'm not taking the same example i'm taking another example let's say you have one and two so this will basically produce something like so this will basically convert one into a binary operator so binary one is one and then this will basically shift one two times to the right or to, to the left sorry to the left so you get something like one zero zero which is actually four so the result of this is four because in binary what happens is one gets shifted two times to the left and the conversion of that into decimal from binary is four so that's just basically it so what we're dealing with here is something like zero and one zero so this is not shifting one to the left at all it's not shifting it at all so you get zero and zero and zero and zero are obviously so and this is the and operator the good old and operator and in the and operator if you have zero zero you get zero you get zero zero you get uh, uh, sorry if you have zero one you get zero if you have one zero you get zero again and then you have one one you get one so this is the and operator um, you probably know this it's not a big deal uh, so here you get the and operator and what happens is that zero and zero will give you zero so this entire thing in the first loop will be zero which means that nothing's gonna actually happen nothing's gonna get appended to subset no, nothing's gonna happen so nothing's gonna get appended into subset so when it comes to this line over here what actually ends up happening is that it appends an empty set so this is an empty set so that's when so in the example when we you know took a b c and the first empty set that you saw this is what produces the empty set cool okay let's take an example so let's say combination index is in it's like i don't know third loop so what basically happens is you have combination index equal to three and uh, you have three loops running over here that is one three and um, one less than less than zero three and one less than less than one three and one less than less than uh, two so three can be converted into something like uh, zero one one so zero one one and in binary you get like one uh, zero one one and in binary you get so this is shifted by one so this is one zero zero one one and this is shifted by two so you get one zero zero so this will give me a value of zero zero one because always imagine zeros over here so you have zero then you have one and zero which is zero and then one and one and one this will give me something like zero one zero and this will give me something like zero 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 so this is the first two elements of the set, this set is 1, 2. So if the combination, if this will only be successful, this, this entire um, function or this entire condition will only be successful if this is greater than 0. So if this is 0, this will not execute. It will skip out of the loop. It will skip out of the, you know, it, it won't execute this statement. But if this is greater than 0, which is in this case it might be just 1 or 1, 1, then you're good to go then you basically append the subset and then you're done. So that's basically how this algorithm works. Um, it's a very interesting way. If, if you don't understand it, I'm, I'm sure if you write this on a piece of paper, uh, you definitely will. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like, share, and subscribe, and share this video with somebody who wants to learn how to do power sets. Bitwise operators are like really, really awesome. So um, I was going to say a bad word over there, but I didn't say it. <laughs> so yeah um so thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next one peace